An entitled customer tries to purposefully break our bowling equipment just so he can get extra time to bowl longer with his family. But in the end, I get the last laugh as I charge this guy for all the free time he thought he was getting out of us. And as a result, he definitely was not happy. Here's what happened. So I had the unique pleasure of working in customer service for over seven years. My longest job was at a bowling alley in a mid-sized town. It was the high-end bowling alley in the town and thus attracted some pretty entitled people. While I got pretty good at zoning out their dumb requests and simply complying, there were a few times that malicious compliance really was warranted. And this was one of those times. So for some backstory, the bowling alley required people to purchase bowling by time. So typically it'd be like $20 per hour or something like that. When I turned on the lane, the bowlers got a 5 minute buffer period in addition to their time purchased. Most of the time, this was not an issue and people came and left with no issue at all. Upon request, however, people could get an extra 15 minutes for free in case of mechanical issues or large groups that were in the 8th frame or higher. And I bet you can imagine where this goes bad. Now onto the main story. So one day, a family consisting of a dad, two daughters, and a mother came in and started a tab with one hour. We let them open tabs since we had servers and food service too. The kids were younger, but I had seen this dad in the bowling alley before as he played in one of our leagues. He was one of those just snobby looking bowling guys with a rolling bowling bag, beat up bowling balls and a huge belly that seemed to go hand in hand with the pro bowlers that came into this alley. He had scammed a lot of free stuff from us before and we had actually been warned about him as employees. Fast forward an hour and his time is almost up when all of a sudden I hear a large crash. It was the sound that a bowling ball makes when it hits the sweep that wipes the pins off the lane. There's a small window of time that a bowler can hit the sweep while it's clearing pins and of course the dad I discussed earlier was the one that hit it. He comes bumbling over and tells me the lane is broken. And I could clearly see that the lane was broken because the lane monitor screen had the code for a jammed arm. I apologized and I called for a mechanic. After doing that, he demanded 15 minutes of free time since he had to wait for the mechanic to fix the lane, which took about two minutes in general. Since it was his first incident, I gave it to him. And that honestly was my first mistake. Because as you can probably guess it, this happened again a second time, right as his time limit was getting low. He came bumbling over once again and did the same routine and I regrettably gave the second set of time to him for free and then he went away and as you may have guessed it, it happened a third time. This time however, I decided to charge him for the 15 minutes since I knew what he was up to and our policy specifically states that we only give 15 minutes for free. On the fourth time, the guy came over again and I charged him again. This happens a total of five times and I charged him for three of them. When he finally decided to pay out he saw his bill and got furious with me. He came thundering over to me and barked at me, saying that I was wrong and that he needed to see my manager. When my manager came out, he gave his side of the story, which of course was about how I was an idiot and that our lanes break way too easily. I then gave my side and calmly explained that I gave him more free time than our policy had stated and that due to his continued request for more time, I gave it to him at a cost. My manager then asked to see the tab and look through it. Not only did my manager agree that I was right, but he also made the guy pay for the second set of 15 minutes that I had originally given to him for free. My manager cited our policy and told the man what he needed to pay, and after some intense yelling, the guy cursed us out and vowed to never come back ever again. And wouldn't you believe it, he ended up coming back for league three days later. So clearly, he knew what he was doing that day, and he was just mad that he ended up getting caught. What an absolute scumbag, and honestly, this is so unacceptable. I mean, how can you treat someone like this and still get away with it? And when I first read through this, I was actually really surprised that this guy didn't get banned from this place. But the original poster actually has some more details involving that. They go on to explain that a few months later, he was eventually banned from the alley entirely. The guy apparently broke one of the super light balls of his that's about six pounds, and he got angry with the manager when they refused to fix it. And in his anger, he threw the ball at the glass doors and broke it. And because of that, he ended up getting arrested and was forced to pay for damages while also earning a restraining order. And that seriously is just not surprising to me. This sounds like one of those guys who's going to try and work the system and then throw a temper tantrum when he doesn't get his way. So thankfully, there is some justice and karma in the world because that guy was super obnoxious and it only was a matter of time before he got banned from this bowling alley completely. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My Entitled Mom is into 
denial, claiming that I'm just going to do my internship remotely when in fact I am moving out and I will be moving to the big city so I can pursue my career. But despite these facts, she still chooses not to get it. And I'm honestly so exhausted trying to explain anything to her. Here's what happened. I'm going to be starting my internship in a few months and it has been something IT related. I've told my mother about this, saying I'd be in the city looking for jobs because IT jobs are way more abundant in a city. When I first told her, she was a bit skeptical about it. She kept asking me if I'm sure I can't do my internship at home. I told her no and I have to be working with computers for my internship because I'm there to get industrial experience. After the internship, I would probably stay in the city for more long-term IT jobs. But since then, every time the topic was brought up, she would always act like I'd be interning or working in my hometown instead. She would even prove this point by saying things that implied that I would be working from home instead of working in this city. And I would always correct her, saying it is near impossible to find an IT job in my small hometown away from the city. And just because someone else's daughter was able to find an accounting job there doesn't mean I'm going to have the same opportunities with an IT job, let alone a decent one where I can get some industrial experience. Now, when I told her that, she responded by saying, yes, but as long as there's a computer, it's IT. And when she said that, I just did the biggest facepalm. She wants me to work in my previous office job in my hometown as a data entry clerk. The pay was decent and I was able to give her some of my pay to help with groceries. But I suspect the real reason she liked it when I worked there is because the boss of the company is incredibly rich and gives out free stuff to women and elderly people during special holidays. As an employee of the company, I get to take home a lot of free goodies for my mother, which she was really happy about. I didn't really care about that stuff that much. I just needed the money to go to university. I also got the hint that she doesn't want me to quit that job when I wanted to switch jobs to do something I'm more passionate about. So I'm telling her that I'm not going to graduate with an IT degree and work in the same place before I went to university. I need to find IT jobs in the city. And she kept saying the same thing over and over again, as if she didn't understand what I just said. She just loves to reply with some kind of contrary statement, as if the point that I've just made meant nothing to her. Trying to tell her no was like talking to a broken record, and I just can't get through to her, so I just end up being quiet and letting her rant. And then she's shameless enough to try and ask me if I'm seriously going to be coming back to my hometown to work, and I just said at that point, whatever. I'm not going back to my hometown. Part of the reason why is because living with her drives me absolutely insane. I'm going to do my internship in the city anyways, but I'll be expecting an earful from her from time to time. She will be subtly complaining about the woes of city life and how convenient it would be for me if I were at home living with her, which honestly, I am absolutely not going to do that. It sounds like your mom is in denial. She clearly does not understand that you are moving up and on with your life. You cannot be expected to live with her for the rest of your life just so she can get free goodies from the job you're currently working. And it sounds like you want to move on from that job anyways. And I don't blame you. You want bigger and better jobs for your future, and this data entry job just simply doesn't cut it for you, which makes sense considering your goals. So I would go for this internship no matter what your mom says. This is going to be such valuable experience, and it will be an opportunity for you to network with people that you very well could work with for the rest of your career. And if she seriously still does not get it, then maybe it's time for you to be more specific with her and set out right in front of her exactly what you're going to do. Maybe something like, Mom, I refuse to work at the company I've been working at ever again. Even if you get me fired from every job I ever get, I will not return there. I'm not staying in this hometown and I am going to the big city. And that's final, no matter what you say. Or maybe something along those lines. Because from the sounds of it, your mom is simply not getting it. So hopefully this all goes well for you. Because quite literally, your whole life is in front of you. And I think you owe it to yourself to move out of your mom's house and move on with your life. My entitled cousin makes outrageous demands about a job that I'm trying to get her at my company. And when I tell her no, she freaks out on me and tries to get me disowned from the entire family. So as a result, I cut her as well as her mother out of my life. Here's what happened. I'm a 36-year-old female and I've never been very good at keeping most people around. I basically disowned my physically and emotionally awful egg donor at the age of 10. I'm talking about my mother in case you're not catching on. And I did the same with my neglectful father at the age of 14. I have had symptoms of social anxiety disorder since I was about three or four. I just don't really know how to connect with most people. My empathy levels are off the scale. However, the 
this is especially prevalent when I do connect with someone or an animal or wildlife. I know now that some people find my kindness and sincerity to be off-putting. People have been so horrible to me, and I see so much horrible treatment throughout the world that I always give a compliment when one might pop up in my mind, and I work hard to be the queen of gift-giving. It is understandable that this can't scare some people, since I believe the only true monsters in this world are humans. There are, most likely, a lot of humans that have placated kindness and have been looking to manipulate or to do harm. But I am not like that. I go into overdrive trying to help the people I care about when they tell me they are in a bad situation or if they just might be unhappy. A few years before COVID, during Thanksgiving, my cousin, who was in their mid-20s at the time, let's call her Tony, that's not her real name, was constantly complaining about how much she hated working as a caregiver. She would talk about how little money she made and how financially strapped she truly was. My family is mostly on the poverty scale. I think I only just barely broke out of that in the last three years. And while my husband and I are still not in the best financial situation in the world, it is a lot better than poverty. Anyways, I was working at a credit union at the time, and I offered to put my name down as her referral if she wanted to put her application in. The position was making over $4 more per hour than she was at her current position, and it came with a $500 signing bonus. I also took all honor roll and college credit English courses in high school, so my writing skills are superb. So I regularly offer to help my friends and loved ones with their resumes for free whenever they apply for a job. I offer the same to Tony as we had discussed her applying to the credit union. I advise that I don't split referral bonuses, but that if she stayed long enough for me to get one, I would be happy to take her out for dinner. The referral bonus would have been $500, the same as the sign-on bonus. She seemed fine with it throughout dinner and even seemed excited by the prospect of getting a different position. A few nights later, Tony texted me, asking if I would be willing to split a referral bonus with her. I advised her once again that I don't split referral bonuses because we need the money too much. I also reiterated that I would be happy to take her to dinner if I got a referral bonus from her staying the required 90-day period. I had just started driving when I got her response, and I pulled over to read it, and I was flooded with absolute fury when I read her text that said, you're just being selfish, just like your mother. Now, my entire family knows about me being mistreated as a child. And as much as I have tried Tony's whole lifetime to be a kind and good role model whenever I was around her, whenever she did not get the response that she was looking for from me, she would then go to use my hatred of my mother to try and hurt me by saying I am just like her and all these other horrible things. I told her then and there to lose my number because I will never be willing to help her with anything ever again. She texted me again, stating that she and her mother would be getting me banned from future Thanksgiving dinners all because of this. I reached out to my aunt, who is Tony's mother, and I told her that I loved her, but I needed to know if she was a part of this ordeal. She told me that she was, stating that I was selfish and claimed that I didn't know how to treat family and that I should just grow up. So I decided to stop letting her walk all over me and treat me like garbage every time her daughter has a temper tantrum. And so I burned down that bridge between us as I told her that she could get lost. I went to work the next day and informed my boss that I would like my name removed as a referral for Tony and that I did not want her application associated with me at all. My co-workers and management were astounded when they asked for the story. They stated that we specifically provide a $500 sign-on bonus so that new hires won't ask for the $500 referral bonus. Why does she need the bonus as well? Fast forward to next year at Thanksgiving and my husband and I were fighting to get our car unstuck from the snow. Tony and her boyfriend came out onto my other aunt's porch and just laughed and mocked us the entire time. And my sister was upset when she found out. She said I absolutely should have interrupted her dinner to get her help. Neither my sister nor I speak to either this cousin or aunt anymore. Now, my grandma raised me since I was 14 years old and my grandma warned me during high school that my aunt was not my friend and that I shouldn't fool myself. Presumably because of all the horrible things she said about me behind my back to my grandma. I know my grandma was just trying to protect a broken child from even more harm and I wish I had been smart enough to listen to her at the time. But yeah, I used to always wonder if anybody could ever love me since the people who were supposed to love me the most obviously didn't. It took so very long for my husband to break through the persistent thought process of mine and teach me that I didn't have to continue to 
allow people like my aunt to treat me so badly because I didn't realize I don't deserve to be treated like garbage, especially by somebody who claims to be my family. I am amazingly lucky when it comes to the people I do have in my life. Quality over quantity, I guess. I am not very good at keeping most people around, and I have made plenty of mistakes in my life. But for this story, I stand completely by my behavior. My life is better and less stressful without toxic family members that constantly either treat me badly or make passive-aggressive remarks about how I have lived my life and have disowned my terrible parents. If you have a toxic family that makes you feel bad no matter how nice or good you are, try to remember that you are worthy of better and strive for a different environment. This life has continually showed me that if you are depressed and you wonder if the world would be better without you, trust me, cut the people whose words constantly hurt you, those who believe you are worthless, and change your environment. I know life is not always kind, and that may not always be an option, but definitely try. A content life is so much better than a life where you consistently want to end your existence because toxic people have convinced you that you are worthless. They are wrong. Be kind to that lifelong friend in the mirror. Look your friend in the eyes when you look in the mirror and say kind things in your mind. It has taken a long time, but I will attain self-love and I recommend it for all. There's some good lessons to be learned there, but most importantly, if someone's treating you like garbage in this way, then seriously, you are not the bad person for cutting them off. I mean, the original poster here is obviously a very kind individual, and they were just trying to help out their cousin, who clearly was in some kind of need. And for them to act like that when they weren't given exactly what they want, even though what they wanted was absolutely ridiculous and not possible, is overall incredibly toxic. And the fact that they would then take this out on the very person who's trying to get them the job in the first place is just proof that they are not a good person in the slightest. And I don't blame the original poster for cutting them out of their life. I mean, seriously, who would want someone like that around who's going to put you down and try and take advantage of your kindness? That's inappropriate and nobody deserves that. So good for the original poster for trying to preserve their own personal happiness. Because at the end of the day, when all else fails, truly, all you do have is that person in the mirror. And just like the original poster said, I really do agree that you need to be kind to that person, especially when everybody else around you decides to put you down. My boyfriend of seven years is requesting that we take a one year long break so he can figure out what he truly wants out of his life. And I'm honestly so appalled and I simply don't know what to do. So my boyfriend and I have been together since we were about 20 years old. And for the most part, our relationship was pretty good. We can communicate pretty well our wants and needs. So it's been a very healthy relationship overall. A couple of days ago, I noticed that something was bothering him. So I asked him what was going on. He said he doesn't feel as good as he used to. He's not okay with where he is now in his life. He doesn't like his job, his economics, or basically his life in general. The only thing he said is good in his life is me. And that doesn't make him feel fulfilled. We've been talking nonstop this past few days while also shedding many tears. At the beginning, I was scared because I didn't want the relationship to end. But the more we talked, the more I feel I don't deserve this situation. I know that this is not a me problem, but instead this is a problem with him, his life, and his goals. I can't think for him and I cannot be happy for him. I'm exhausted at the end of every conversation as he ends up telling me that even though he wants to discover himself, the only thing he is sure of is that he doesn't want to live without me. But then the next morning, he wakes up confused with what he really wants in his life. He's come up with this idea that maybe we could take a one year long break so he can try and find himself and then come back to me. And when I heard this, I was honestly stunned. I honestly think that's awful. And I told him that I love him so much and probably in a year, I will still love him the same, but I don't deserve that. I won't be sitting with my arms folded just waiting and I will probably resent him a lot. So that won't work for me. If he stays, then he stays and I will commit to work things out in therapy. But if he does leave with the expectation that he can just have me back in a year, then it's done. Our relationship is over. He said the most important thing for him is my happiness and I deserve a concrete answer of what his choice will be. But he wants time to think about it and is requesting about a month to think about it. But now I'm asking myself, what do I want? Honestly, him pulling this stunt destroyed what little trust I had in him in the first place. So I don't know if now I should leave or if I should stick around. What 
what should I do? I think this sounds absolutely ridiculous. This guy wants a one year break from the relationship and just expects you to sit around and wait for him to get his stuff figured out. What he is asking for is a break, but in reality, he is breaking up with you. He is putting on hold your relationship just so he can figure out who knows what. And that's not fair for you in the slightest. And if I was in your shoes, there is no way I would put up with that. Not for a second. So you know what? If he wants to be free, let him free. And that includes him taking a month to figure things out. There's no reason for you to be left in limbo and try and figure out what he wants out of his life. Because clearly, even though he says, oh, your happiness is all that matters to me, his actions and his attitude are saying something different. Like his logic just doesn't make any sense. His life sucks. So now he's going to get rid of the one person who makes his life a little bit better. I mean, that's honestly just so counterintuitive. It's not even funny. So hopefully for the sake of your life and what you want out of this relationship, you put yourself first and figure out what you want with your life. Because waiting a month or even a year for him to figure out his is only a waste of time for you and something that I consider, in my opinion, something that's not worth your time and not something that you should wait on. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.